Satguruve Namaha, pranams to Dr. Kameshwari, pranams to Dr. Balasubramaniam, to the Deputy Director, to our Chair, to a very august gathering here. Kindly never thank me, Balasubramaniam sir, for accepting to come here because this is one place where the spiritual energy gets replenished. And looking at the great portraits around us, we might get somewhere some courage to attempt research. Because this is such a hoary atmosphere and I'm extremely humbled that one more time, this is the third time that I'm connecting with this great institution and I'm thankful that they published my paper recently in one of the esteemed journals, Oriental Research on Concepts of Trika in Natya Shastra. And uh, today, as so rightly said, I have chosen a good topic of Bharatanatyam as a ritual. Let me offer my prayer in the form of a song and a little bit of Abhinaya, just a few lines, because as a dancer, it makes me more warmed up. Shri Chakra Raja Simhasaneshwari Shri Lalita Bigaye Bhuvaneshwari Agama Veda Kalamaya Rupini Akila Chara Chara Janani Narayani Naka Kankana Nadaraja Manohari Nyana Viteshwari Raja Rajeshwari Shri Chakra Raja Simha Saneshwari Shri Lalita Bhigaye Today is Naga Panchami and I'm extremely uh, grateful that the Almighty preponed my talk and I'm lucky that a little before I spoke, Dr. Ramadevi spoke about certain concepts which connect very much and again I think uh, the other uh, speaker spoke about the macrocosm, microcosm and uh, the metaphysical aspects which is common to architecture, arts, common to every learning because if we accept that what we see with the eyes is the only truth, we are actually fooling ourselves. So let us go layer after layer. We have some distinguished artists in the audience. Thank you very much. Some of you are performing on a regular basis, youngsters and gurus who have uh, your own uh, parampara that is happening. So this attempt of Bharatanatyam as ritual through this paper is going to make us all look within what we are all doing on stage today, something which was inherited in the temple, something which was exclusively for the communities who danced in the temples has been thrown open throughout the world and we have everyone who is engaging in the art. There are times when we find that the, the gap between the Shaiva Agama from which all this is evolved, we know hundreds and thousands of years since when the precursors to the so-called Bharatanatyam, the Sadir was practiced and before that what was the Bharadas Natyam which was done and then on a few hundred years ago that the so called name that we all as proponents perform Bharatanatyam came up. What we do today, in general I am speaking, is we do a lot of admixture here and there. The margamitsam sometimes becomes lopsided. The main piece of the repertoire which is Padavarnam is sometimes given in small bits and pieces. Is that the right approach. So where is it that we need to connect back and understand how this margam itself has a lot more to 
teach us as practitioners? Is it marking a journey as the great Doyen Balama told of getting into the sanctum of the temple, connecting with the deity? Is it the Arohana Krama which is the disillusion from the gross to the subtlest which is in the Garbhaguri which is marked by that Vimanam with those various stories. We saw the nine divisions there. Some of you showed the Karanas which are there. Some of you in the picture showed us some Apsaras dancing in the, in the Gopura. Is it just coincidental? Why is it that we don't think about how the quartet has given us this jewel of a margam exclusive to Bharadhanatyam that we have, the central piece of Padavarnam. What could be the deeper significance of it? Can we do justice to that in the future? So these are the small questions that triggered in me So, for the choice of this paper today. And I think immediately after my main research of Tantra, the science and Natya, the Art Kumbha Swami Shastri Research Institute hosted me and later on I had a chance to take it to many more places. So let me hope and pray that after this, this concept built upon Margam as a journey into the microcosm, Margam as a journey into the temple the macrocosm, the, the pindanda responding to the vibrations it gets from that universal realm is, is my humble attempt here. Thank you. I will shift there so I can read from there. So we start from how in the Natya Shastra itself we have reference to how the Natya Sutras coming under the Tantric ritual tradition or the Agamic tradition, the Shaiva Agamas have influenced the, the preliminary part of Purvaranga with its element of worship, which is puja. So today also very few dance schools are performing the so-called Purvaranga. Yes, yes, madam. Bharadhanatyam contains triangular movements, the geometric movements, the rising flame which is typical of the Bharatanatyam dance form. It has a stance of a yogi. So I'm trying to now discern for all of us the body, how the body is divided as a dancer. So from there on I go further. The yogi, we used to be always said, keep your aramandi straight, keep your saushtuvam. And I was fortunate to learn from the Isaiah tradition, my gurus, and they have even told us at times to stand on paddy and tap our feet so we don't shake. And we used to have a stick that was tied like this around our waist. So it was a stiff, the, the Sushumna Nadi they used to tell us. And how the Brahma Sutra is supposed to be passing invisibly through your middle portion. So these are established in the very form itself is how energy is tapped. The moment we do this, we do a Purna Mandali and then we have this full sitting which is so typical of Bharatanatyam, half sitting, standing position. All these have a specific purpose in the method of the pedagogy of training itself. It is first on the lower half and then it slowly evolves to the middle and then the upper, the Abhinaya we focus upon. So this is an idea is how I'm studying the art, the way it is taught, the way it has been meditated upon to bring out this form that it has today. The Agamic tradition in general, we all heard about the Makuta Agama or the Kamika Agama or Ajita Agama or Prodgitam, all these Agamas mention very clearly about how Natyam is part of the Shodopachara Puja and how in the ritual, the effort in a ritual, what does the ritual aim, sir? Sir will speak to us in detail, he said about ritual. The ritual is to slowly unwind from this worldly and take you to the, from the mundane to the supra-mundane, from the iha to the para. 
it doesn't say that you neglect the world it's a shaiva siddhantam ultimately it is vedantam it's in the anta stage but yet it may speak of aham brahmasmi the ultimate stage but yet it reckons how the world itself is utilized how the body and the mind are utilized to go beyond the body and the mind so that is the the ritual in which we are offering the the five elements in dance we establish that very clearly and in the way the uh, the natya grahas were consecrated also that was the aim and we had the jarjara like the vedic upa in in the consecration of the of the pillars of the natya mandapa all that follows the ritualistic worship now that it has been shifted from the uh, consecrated space to a proscenium where we perform we have to be a little more careful in that our prayer should not lose in terms of sincerity or in ritual we have to perform it actually to mean what we do whether it is lighting a lamp or offering a flower or giving a naivedyam we have ranga praveshams by the dozen every week so what we need to aim as artists is that that ritual is is to be maintained with sincerity because this is how it was aimed to be now from there on these the stars the thi nakshatra the almanac those who know the first chapter second chapter third chapter of natya shastra we know after thousands of years and even from the the uh, the evolution over the years and the medieval text that we have all followed evolved to the modern text everyone speaks about how you are going to consecrate the space and bring that universal power onto that platform where you are performing now from here i come directly to this macrocosmic representation of this most sacred yantra that i am following that i am trying to replicate and map along with our margam or the conventional bharatanatyam which is sri chakra an expression of rhythm aesthetics representing the cosmos that is expanding and contracting in talam in layam tantra shri tantra associates the 43 triangles with a technique with a sound with a symbol and with the natya yogini is doing the karanas the 44th which is also a triangle is the center most which is the pulsating dot saundarya lahari a few people also spoke of saundarya lahari and japo jal pahar that the shloka am also was recited here another shloka which speaks about the description of the shri chakra is the four shri kanthas and five shiva yuvatis the shiva triangles and the shakti triangles are the nine mola prakritis basic manifestations apart from bindu the form of the chakra with the two lotus circles which are 8 and 16 petals the three surrounding circles which are there in some chakras but not in all the schools and beyond that there are the three consecutive lines forming the the gate of the mansion with totally 44 corners in dai muladhara chakra i meditate on navatman says the jagat guru adi shankara who expressing nayan sentiments is engaged in maha tandava dance at the company of samaya dancing last year and we have the father mother duo coming together for this natyam which is the basis for our our creation sustenance absorption removing the veil of ignorance and finally anugraha mor grace i quote again the late balamma who made such a powerful statement that the traditional order of bharatanatyam recital reveals the spiritual through the corporeal because we have only this form this uh, what the goddess has given us that is why we need to take care of this also that this is the yantram that we have as artists which gets energized as a deity when we are performing 
So the recital itself, the margam itself, what she means here is the conventional model of the margam, structured like our great temple. We enter through the gopuram, cross the ardha mandabam, and then the mandabam, and then we are into the holy precinct of the uh, garbhagraha. This is the inner space which gives expansive scope to revel, she says. And now I come to how this margam, what was the purpose of it? We all have repeatedly said in the past papers how the temple replicates the, the universe. And that temple is here. We are dancing in the temple. We are supposed to be dancing in the temple. So we make our way into the temple with the convention to touch the deity in the center. And then return back. The same way we make a journey through this microcosm to touch the deity in your heart. So that is the extent to which the meditation in the dance is emphasized in the margam was the purpose of giving it this structure by the great saint poet Sri Muthu Swami Dikshidhar who has influenced. We know that the quartet before that also there was the, the blueprint of the margam from some of the patrons. It was concretized during the period of the quartet who had music diksha from a great worshipper of Devi in the Sri Chakra who was himself an embodiment of Nada Brahman and he had provided, I am sure the music scholars who are going to speak of music will agree that there is material given by him to correlate the the Panchadashakshari, the Shodashi of the mantra and its tantra with music itself. The Tanjavur quartet from among them Ponnaya who was, who was hailed as the Bharata Sreshta, he sang that I have reposed my faith in the peerless Guru Gohamurti who is very talented in dance. This is by one who is seen as a founder of the Margam is an endorsement of the saint's knowledge of the theory of dance. The dance worship is Laya Yoga, Sri Chakra Tantra is also the Samhara Krama, the Laya Krama, where we go from the external to the internal and till we reach the Bindu as per the Dakshinamurti tradition. Shall we go to the next slide please? Oh, here there are some pictures finally appearing. So, that statement there influenced by inconspicuous design of temple architecture and the Sri Chakra. Follow please. Now, how we are mapping the repertoire with the Yantra, the Yantra of the temple and the Yantra worship which is a ritual. The entry into the Bhubura Chakra, which is the gates, which is the first Avarana, the first sheath. The outermost three gates, which stand for mesmerizing the three worlds, the pattern of the movements follow this Avarana. Mallari has Nadaswaram and Tavil. These are the invocations that we start with, like a temple procession. Pushpanjali with offering of flowers, a shloka to remove the obstacles in praise of Ganesha, the kavutvams, the mela prapti, and the various sulu that we use, tadi, tomanam, or digitaga 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 ta, te, tam, all that, you know, the bijaksharas per se have no meaning. They evoke the light energy and they mark these areas in the in the peripheral as we are entering into the temple. And some traditions also follow the Shuddha Nrutam for this, for the entry and Todaya Mangala. The next one. In which the Navasandhi Kautuams venerating the directions. Simultaneously this is also pulled out from the Sri Chakra worship. Okay. So we are following the worship of dance as a ritual and Sri Chakra as a worship. 
the Namasandhi Kautums when you read the directions of these uh, uh, Devathas and the number 9 which is significant throughout in your Vastu also you often saw speaking about the number 9, the magic of 9. It's established in the beginning itself and the emotional states of the Nava Rasas also are finding a place in the Sri Chakra. Allah report today, which is most common in our tradition, it marks the entry to the main Gopuram, the gates of Sri Chakra to the next Avarana, signifying the 16 petaled chakra, which is the fulfiller of all desires. That chakra, Alaripu means to adorn with flowers and blossoming out of a bud. The beads are traditionally only in Chaturashra and Tishra. It is only later that a lot of new innovations have started. So the basic Chaturashra itself is the basic the denoting element for the beginning of rhythm, the beginning of creation. The fourth is also called the, the Chatura even, I think uh, among Pan, Panini Sutras also you have something called the Chatura, the fourth one, the Turiya state. So that is from where on starts the first, the rhythm, the rhythm of creation. So we have the rhythm of four beats and we also have the rhythm of three beats which is basic. The dance starts with the charming movements of the eye, neck, hand and feet and the invocatory dance representing the chakra, in the chakra the energy points of Muladhara or the earth and the Swadhisthana or water. So earth and water the basic things for creation that is marked with the first number. The second one, Jatiswaram or Swarajadi. I have made the chakras design also, the, the colors also in such a manner that I have combined, like I have used vermilion and I have used uh, turmeric color and then the combination of that. So instead of white, I have made it yellow. Red and white generally even in Natya Shastra signify the Shiva and the Shakti colors. So here it is yellow and red instead. The dance is in the second and then the third avarana of eight petals in the Sri Chakra. The Chakra is that of in the microcosm, I'm talking about macrocosm, microcosm simultaneously. So visualize a Chakra and visualize the dancer. The third avarana of eight petals, the Manipura or the fire Chakra which is supposed to dispel fear in the Sri Chakra. Here the movements are pure nrutta again and musical notes sent to a set to a particular raga, tala. It has sequence of adavu. So we are still in the level of swara and um, sol. This um, The rhythmic beats again for the Jatiswaram is 3 and 4. 4 also denotes the earth, the Vedas as per the study of Chakra. Parapashinti Madhyama Vaikari and expands as 8 and 16 petals. 3 symbolizes water, creation, sustenance, disillusion, Jagrat Sopna, Sushupti and Sattva Rajas Tamas. So here we are marking how you also with the performance are emphasizing that you have got this yantram in you to start on this journey as a ritual from the Bhubura level right up to the Akasha, Chita Akasha level one after the other. Paravak in identity with Prakasha in manifestation evolves as Pashyanti. Madhyama is the faint whisper, Vaikari is the speech where finally the object and the subject become distinct as Padartha. So after this comes the Padartha Abhinaya in Shabdam where we are introducing. So now I have marked the, uh, the Trikonas in such a way that with Shabdam we are getting into the next Avarana which has got the Chaturdasha Trikonas, the Konas, the 14 triangles. Shabdam, which is 
the third piece in our margam means word literally strong voice of people that is what we represent in the margam one enters the fourth avarna where the chakra from manipura we come into the anahata chakra which is standing for the wind element granting the prosperity so we are now propitiating each and every element this is what we should remember the margam is designed in such a way that each and every piece of it the moment we hear the music and venerate ourselves we are no short of any great tantra they say that thousand rituals is equal to one moment in laya so to what extent we have to consecrate our inner space those days the dancers used to do the the uh, antar yavanika in sai or bahir yavanika those ways in which they were consecrating and making prana pratishta within themselves before they appeared today we just put the gajai and then the anchor announces and we are on stage and we start dancing so to some extent we need to understand that at the end of the day it is a journey within yourself it is not about traveling everywhere it's a travel within yourself by which you are going to benefit a great deal like bharada promises shivaloka apnoti you are going to get that final and take also the rasikas to that level so every part of the performance the dancer the singer the poetry you choose the musicians the ambience everything is designed to take you like the temples right to that level of para so when we sing para para or we are dancing para but what is para is something that the dancer also has to understand and try to connect to that space now which shabdam comes the introduction of abhinaya using angika abhinaya using vachika abhinaya in shabdam you are not made to delineate the story in length it is just in brief that you introduce so shabdam marks from tadi tomnam to after tat ya te tat ta dayarad pudalvan you start with a story like a kambaramayana or something like that you start to it or whatever the quartet has given us you start with a story element introduce the padartha abhinaya don't go into the vakyartha abhinaya at that level so that is also designed in the same manner the chakra with four samhara triangles and five shrishti triangles follows after this level of shabdam when we come to the main piece de resistance the quintessence of bharatanatyam the pada varnam for a musician varnam is just beginning to for abhyasa right they sing the varnam and then they go on for ragam thanam palvi for a dancer this is the main piece and varnam pada varnam is designed as a stand alone piece and today we have to generate more and more pupils to be able to do the age old varnams instead of doing teasers of varnams because varnams is is meant for a complete journey into the temple itself the nine avarnas are there inside it the jivatma parmatma purpose is established in the padavarnam yes please so this particular thing that i tried to make was to put in the the star of david so called the, the the inside the bindu the actual connection of of shiva and shakti right in the middle so in the varnam we go right into the bindu and charanam they say is the heart of the varnam the heart where from there on it picks up and you repeat it time and again you like nataraja deva how many times you keep repeating it so you're right over there and then you do the swaras and then you do the abhinaya so this it's a great joy for us that we are right in the most sacred part of the temple and this most sacred part where chitta chitta ambaram where he is actually residing so that's why those days the varnam so mostly in place of lord nataraja only like all of them were designed in those big temples or made for those deities by the kings uh, the beginning has four units of pure dance interspersed with sahitya and corresponds to extolling the feats of the lord the deity is usually shiva 
and we are going to the bindu where they say that it is not nada but nada anta state which is one of the states in trika meditation shaivagama seva siddhanta is the same as trika where it is uh, pashupati and uh, nara and here it is uh, pashu pati and nara over here and it is shiva shakti shiva shakti nara over there pat pashu pati and pasha in uh, shaiva siddhanta or if it is para apara and para apara there it is bheda abheda abheda uh, abheda so it is just the same a little bit of differences i'm sure that they know about the malas which is a bit different otherwise it is one and the same so they say bharata himself was a trika sutrakara from there on we are now at this level where we are performing which is something actually the the goal the purpose of shaigama shaiva agama in rupa in nama as a dance so in padavarnam why do we have shringara they say why so much of shringara there was an attempt by many people to remove shringara but what is the importance of shringara it is only in shringara that the male is dissolving is is male body and getting into the shakti is getting into the female so all the barricades are destroyed we can't say that a man is it, it all are shaktis it is not that shakti is only for women it is the, the principle of the movement the energy in every part of creation is shakti so to break that gross barrier he becomes a nayika and then he moves closer so if shakti is approaching shiva nobody can become shiva it's a wrong claim you can only become shakti at her greatest highest level then the the door is open to connect with shiva ultimately so that is the purpose of shringara where all the limitations of the body all the 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 the, the way in which you are pulled down by that by the the jada or all the kinds of asanas all of that can be removed only with this and by shringara they meant is love to surrender prema it's bhakti it's beyond the 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 rati it is far higher so to that level only shringara can take you and the varnam is designed for that and in the end when they close the varnam the there is a puzzle that is left by the dancer is is the union happened or not so you are not supposed to show the actual union which is what is happening today on stage unfortunately so what you are supposed to show is leave that suggestion that it is a continuous thirst the continuous incompleteness that we all have in our daily life the completeness comes the the finite becomes the infinite only through the union with the paramatma so that is the deeper meaning of shringara and we should definitely do the shringara padams why have any kind of odd feeling when your nayaka is the lord the nayaka is not any person next to you it is the lord ultimately so that was the purpose of that in the padavarnam and here from this on we mark a very important level of transition in the chakra also we are going to the from the the outer 10 triangles bahir dasha you going to the inner the antar dasha which is also signifying the rise of kundalini the uh, the 10 mudra shaktis that is the same mudra shaktis the dasha mahavidya inner the outer is the dasha avatara it is only devi who shown a indifferent form so we now go into the esoteric the actual metaphysical part of inside the chakra where you are connecting with the deepest level of thought the deepest level of spiritual existence so here the song also is been designed to accentuate in tempo with the charana and then the speedy movements come then you cross over and come to the seventh avarna which has the vowels consonants vagadevatas manasu buddhi ahamkara so what is it you are actually breaking from all these bondings and you are getting more and more into the raw spiritual mode so that is what is established through varnam 
which is a colorful representation varnam also is the seed syllable the singular anahata dhvani that is also varna now here on we move to the eighth trikona chakra from the uh, antardasha we come to the trikona which also has the 15 facets of chandrakala i am sure all dancers will agree that the second half in the end there is always in the lyrics itself we have a somarasa we have the chandrakala we have all this union of how the the rasa is is with the with the deity so these are what it actually signifies the vishuddha and akya lalata chakras we are rising here representing either and the mind are empowered at this matrix of ichcha gnana kriya shaktis we are rising to the the upper higher level the abhinaya and varnam we should all admit has all the aspects and satvika is the most important without satva your dance cannot move bharada says that very emphatically and you cannot teach satvika abhinaya can you all teach satvika abhinaya you cannot it has to be felt so satvika abhinaya comes as they say when the elements connect when akasha and prithvi when vayu and jala then you have the perspiration you have the ashru you have the change of voice you have the change of color or the horripilation all that is nothing but the five mahabhutas interacting with each other so here the the uh, ninth avarna finally is now with all this abhinayas you are able to connect and go deeper to come finally to the ninth avarna which is maya sahita brahman it is not only brahman and the point of union is left to the imagination here i also have taken navarasa varanam of of sri lal guri jayaraman uh, which is a case study that i have taken based on this study on this research last slide please yes we have padam this is one performance that i have done only with the chakra as a bindu it is been called padam with the naravarna javali kirtanams and the temple it marks the various ancillary and peripheral deities the main piece was with the main nataraja who was the somebody said that he is the vastu purusha in actual form as the main deity and finally yes you come back with tillana from the samharana krama with tillana you are getting back because as we have to open and close we again come back to the bhumi level with that we are establishing the srishti tatva we do the ranga kramana we do the adavas which is sentry fugal sentry petal and we do all the karanas again coming to the the gop the various gopuras the passages and the temples and establish that you are you have made that arohanam you have done the avarohanam also in your dance so that is why it is designed to be the last number yes please last one yeah just one last last slide yes this is something that i wanted you all to see uh, balu sir just 5 minutes balu sir the bhupura the shodashadala padma i have designed it with the microcosm as a dancer uh, marking the levels and uh, the various chakras on you on your subtle level and the various texts that i have taken to connect all that i told you all right now along with the agama encyclopedia and a few other texts that i i if i have time i'll show you the bibliography yes please next one some of these worshipful hasta mudras uh, which is for, which is being used both for worship and for dance that i have connected and the three layers in bharatanatyam very much established the three kootas of a chakra in your dance is very clear so my attempt has been to connect the margam with the chakra the dancer herself on the microcosmic level with a yantra yes the last slide please this is from your own library that i pulled out a text last time varivasya rahasya which also i had uh, taken for my references which is what is the last line over there and uh, the various stages of meditation that i have written out there one by 16 of a matra trika meditation 
which is followed also in our dance in the laya in the thala uh, as we integrate all these aspects together we are able to achieve a ritual through our dance thank you very much all of you for your patient hearing of the subject which is is something very difficult also to speak for me thank you which is what i'm experiencing at every level of my dance thank you uh, i should inform every one of you here that her article that has come out recently in our journal of orient research is about the trika philosophy as given by abhinava gupta not in his tantra loka but in his abhinava bharati invocatory verses of each chapter there are 34 chapters two chapters do not have the invocatory verse because of the loss of loss of the manuscript but all the 32 chapters have the invocatory verse no voice hello amma renna achbar navarda ha all the 32 chapters have the invocatory verse invocatory verse which she has interpreted not interpretation it is really beautifully she has discussed the trika philosophy brought out by abhinav gupta in those invocatory verses kindly please everyone of you read it especially where is ampeta uh, nadukula prahelika umapati umapati should read it and professor tyagarajan and professor srinivasan should read and give your comments it's a beautiful article she has done thank you athi initially started not temple ruchege udapekam tamaradakam it is an aradhana no doubt but to understand and relate it with dance perhaps this is the first time i am hearing an excellent correlation of both mantra tantra and uh, natya in sri vidya tantra dr bal subramanian knows and others in the ksri know that there is a work by bhaskaracharya bhaskaracharya is it chitka chitka gana chandrika ah uh, it is not bhaskaracharya as cried to kalida uh, um, kalidasa but unfortunately it is not of kalidasa but by one srivasa in which these things are correlated apart from this a yoga aspect also is mixed in it and there also i don't find any relation or rather anything related to dance though we talk of raja exhibiting the entire thing in him the esoteric aspect of it is not really understood by many a few people have understood theoretically people have accepted understood by practically they have not delivered the goods to the audience or the persons who are interested as is the regions the things you have been talking about remained be the lalita sasnama and also saundarya lagri mula adhara ikana leya ise swadishta nam bujaruda bujaruda adde manipura antara sthita anahata abjana leya visuddhi prana leya agya chakra antara astha mula adhara ikana leya and here brahma uh, sorry uh, ಸಹಸ್ರಾರಾಂಬುಜಾರೂಢಿಸ್ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ಟೀಷ್ಟಿಸ್ನವಾವರಣ all these kutas he brought out and all the nava varnas he discussed and directly he has made you understand that the entire sharira is nothing but that and the cosmo 
uh, aspect of it also indicated and with regard to the Sakasraram Vijaruda the Lilda Sastrama how to raise your Kundalini to the Sakasrara of course these are all the ways Margas as you said this is a Marga in your technical term but how it has, it has to reach it can only be reached only by step by step all of a sudden you can't jump over the other thing the step by step of things that are being taken to make you realize that you are none other than rather the you, you are a potentially divine being and all potential divine qualities are within you and how to realize step by step these things are being narrated and as Kalidasa himself has said in some other uh, stage this is one art will come to Kala that makes people understand what you convey through gestures and also through your different bhavas which you have within you I do not know how many dancers are able to portray this through their dance nowadays the dance has become just like anybody can dance in any way without any grammar for it that is not the case there is a system behind it and that system is not even taught by the teachers that is the thing you teachers of course we may uh, teach them how thing, things are there behind it the aspects of dance and with regard to the personal aspect of it you talked about Madhima, and of course the Vaikari is the term you have not used. Para, Pashyanti, Madhima, Vaikari, the four stages of exhibition through words. And you talked about dance and the music, Sangeetam, Atasakityam, Sarasutya, Stanadvayam, Ekam, Apadam, Maduram, Anyida, Alochanam. You are exhibiting it. How? You are able to experience the Navarasas, Sangara, everything. The Navarasas are not merely for enjoyment. That you should have within you. Every day we are enjoying. The Navarasas are there within us. But we don't identify what is that rasa within us. We immediately get angry. Oh, everything is there within us. So, if you can't, you, at the one point which uh, you mentioned there, uh, attracted me well because in your sadhana you have sort of a, 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 a ball knows very well about it you have certain concentration in a particular thing through which you are able to attain a sort of peace you told about para then the maximum the ultimate thing the dancer has to enjoy the ultimate thing, even by, by Vedanta and other uh, Shastras also it is said, it is Ananda. Anando, Pramidvijana. So that Ananda has to be realized. And if it is not realized, there is a Rasabhanga. <laughs> so, the extreme level you will have to enjoy. And for which you have convincingly spoken about the different stages of dancing, realizing the real aspect behind the art of dance. People have simply taken it as mere dance. Dance means just uh, uh, showing uh, hand and uh, leg in different ways. No. Even while you are observing, you showed the picture also very nicely, the Nataraja's dance. 
if you are approaching if you are exhibiting it you are exhibiting what the real dance of nataraja the real dance of nataraja is scientifically speaking is nothing but what has been start uh, spoken by yagyavalkya in brudarne uh, urudu how things are going on ota protataya vartate see things are going moving like this this and that this and that like that the entire world is doing like that the earth is moving like that the sun is moving like that every planet is moving like that. stars move like that where in akantakara so that's why he said brahman means what what how to define brahman bru is the bru vistare that is the root it is always expanding in which everything is dancing and this dance if it is realized if you realize then naturally you attain that ananda that ananda as long as we live we can enjoy age is not the criteria for that the old man can enjoy sangara everything through mind so it is after all the process of mind exhibited through different gestures have to be dance and you have nicely brought out this but one thing i have my own doubt of course here most of them are scholars they can understand persons who have no fundamental knowledge about tantra the sri vidya principles i have my own doubt whether they will be able to capture the very crux of your lecture they, they they must have the base for understanding this without without, without uh, the base they cannot understand uh, even abc of uh, what we have said of course they they will be benefited the dancers may be benefited but others will be just surmising oh so many things are there in this so there is a uh, uh, at the background there is there are so many things okay at least i am happy that you brought out that there is something behind a dwani behind dance a dwani behind dance thank you